And what about for children? Do we see similar red flags um, with children who uh, have are facing some mental health yeah. challenges? Yeah, that's a really great question. So with, with young children, um, these things can show up um, a little bit differently. So, you know, when we think about sort of um, going through the stages of development, the closer to adult they are, the more similar something like depression would look. So for a teenager, it might be quite similar to an adult. Um, for younger children though, they oftentimes show stress through body symptoms. So we might see changes in their eating, we might see changes in their sleeping, um, those types of things. There might be some complaints of, of body pains or discomfort, and that can be a way of the young person expressing that something's the matter, but they don't have the vocabulary yet to be able to say, you know, I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling low. Um, so we can see more of those body um, complaints. The other thing um, with, with children that we can sometimes see is sort of a, a, a withdrawal, sort of a, a, like a loss of interest in activities or things that they used to enjoy. So if they're no longer interested in going to their, you know, their swimming lessons and play dates and that kind of thing, that can be a red flag for kids. Um, and then interestingly as well, in children and teens, sometimes something like low mood or depression can show up a bit differently. So we might see things like irritability or mood swings versus that really sad, low, sort of tearful um, state. Um, so that's another thing that parents might notice, um, another thing to look out for that might give an indication that the child is struggling. So this goes on for many weeks, many months, and to the, to the level that it's getting in the way of day-to-day -day functioning. So the, the child or teen is not, not able to get to class, you know, get their homework done, get to their activities, that type of thing. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a really big impact on day-to-day -day functioning, then it's a sign that it's more than just sort of teenage ups and downs, which of course is understandable, um, and maybe, maybe moving more into the zone where some extra help or support might be helpful. Can you talk about some common coping mechanisms or healthy lifestyle tips for people who are facing mental health challenges? Sure, yes. So I think it's important to think about sort of going back to the basics. So things like healthy eating, prioritizing enough time for sleep, um, getting exercise is a really critical piece and there's research that's growing to show us that exercise in and of itself can be really helpful for things like mood and anxiety. Also getting outside. Um, for adults it's really important to avoid uh, drugs and alcohol which might in the short term give some relief from things like low mood but in the long term typically make it more complicated. Um, managing stress, reducing stress whenever possible, calling in your support system, seeing if there are some things in the course of your week that you could you know, give up for a period of time, doing things like yoga or meditation, whatever you do in your life to manage stress, anything that gives you relaxation. It can also be really helpful to connect with other people. So um, making sure that you reach out to your friends, your family, your support system. Um, and so that might just be, you know, informal, going for a coffee. Um, it can also be more formal, like getting um, support from other people in the kidney community. Um, through the Kidney Foundation, the different supports that are available. Um, so all of those things can really go a long way to helping people manage stress, which then um, can have a positive impact on their mental health. And, and in particular for children, um, what sort of tips might you have around some common coping uh, strategies. Yeah, I think one thing that's really great for families to think about is making sure that there's some um, open dialogue about feelings and emotions. So letting kids know that it's okay to talk about all kinds of emotions and that all kinds of emotions are okay. Um, so, you know, parents can really sort of set a model that it's okay to, to come to me and tell me that you've had a, a bit of a sad day or a bit of an angry day or that kind of thing, that that's okay. That's a nice way for parents then to be able to check in and know how their young person is doing. Um, and I think just as it is for adults, it's so important for kids to have um, good healthy eating, sleeping, activity habits, having a, a good solid um, you know, regular day-to-day -day routine just gives kids that predictability and um, helps them to manage stress that can come along with something like a um, a complex medical condition um, and also again finding ways for kids to connect with other young people their age 
um, whether that's just their classmates at school or with other young people who have um, a medical condition. So things like the kidney camp, I can't tell you how many amazing stories I hear from kids about how much of an impact it can have to spend time you know, in the summer with other people their age who have gone through something similar. So that can be really helpful too.